I know we all crap on the new Super Mario Bros. games, but I think it's easy to forget how fun these can really be. Now, since all the games are relatively similar, we're gonna wrap them all into one big old video. So let's get into why the new Super Mario Bros. series is mind-blowing. In three, two, one. You know, this is technically the first beginning cutscene in a 2D Mario game. Before then, the game just kind of started, but now we get to see exactly how Peach gets kidnapped. What better way to start your game than with a freaking mega mushroom? I'll never forget the first time grabbing this. It just feels good plowing through everything in sight. Star coins add so much flavor to the levels. Not only can they be hard to find, but they're used to unlock things like levels or power-up houses. If you touch the flagpole and the second and third numbers on the timer are the same, you get some pretty fireworks, just like in the original. It is about time we can wall jump and ground pound. It makes moving around so much more accessible. I really love how the bottom screen shows your live count, Mario's progress, the amount of star coins he has, and the power-up he's holding. It really helps the top screen have as little clutter as possible. Possible. I don't think the mini mushroom is that great, but you can run on water. You gotta admit, that's pretty epic. Something about rolling around in the blue Koopa shell is just so much fun. The castle music in this game slaps. There's some really cool original bosses like Mummy Pokey, the Giant Goomba, Lackey Thunder, and a few others. Why is the green in this level so nice to look at? I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I think it's a good looking green, okay? There's really nothing better than sabotaging a cloud from a Lekitu. If you're bored of just regular old coins, new are the red ring coins, where you have to nab them all before the time runs out for a free power up or one up. Apparently, Mario pipes can handle so much pressure that they can expand in size. That's some impressive technology. Technology. Mario must be a thick boy if every time he gets near a tree, a chunk of snow falls down. Mario stars have been improved. He does flips when he jumps. There's an entire level where you run on top of a wiggler. That is ingenious. And speak of wigglers, look at the little mini ones. Aw. The Mario and Luigi mode is incredibly fun. You basically fight the other player to get 10 stars first. It's too bad it's never made a comeback. On top of the main game, you also have a huge selection of mini games to play. Luigi works at a casino. This alone sold every copy of New Super Mario Bros. on the Nintendo DS. This is the first 2D Mario game to have four-player local multiplayer. Did you know this is also the first Mario game to release in Oceania first? That's really random. Wonder why Nintendo chose to do that. You can't go wrong with the propeller mushroom. It's so broken, yet so great at the same time. Yoshi makes his triumphant return from Super Mario World, and he's got the good old flutter kick. While I never personally use the super guides, the hint movies can be quite the spectacle to watch. Swimming through water balls is my favorite pastime. I like how the mushroom houses are actual mini games and not just hitting a block. Some of these levels are really creative, like this ice one where you have to slide across in a penguin suit and avoid all the icicles falling. It's nice that the airship stages actually take Mario in and outside the ship. It makes it feel a bit more lively. Only real gamers play the dark levels without the light. And the final Bowser is freaking giant. The fight itself isn't that hard, but there is a sense of terror and excitement, having this giant beast obliterate the entire stage from behind you. There's something really satisfying about collecting a bajillion coins. Especially with power-ups like Gold Mario, where anything his golden balls touch turn into coins. Speaking of balls, the Tanuki suit makes its grand reappearance. And the Mega Mushroom is back too! This game cares so much about coins that the only new enemies are just boned reskins and gold reskins. Yeah, you may call that lazy, I call it dedication. Even though this is on a handheld, you can still play the whole game with a friend thanks to local co-op play. While Mario Bros. U plays the same as the other games, the controls definitely feel the most refined find in this version. The new acorn suit is pretty fun to use. It's kind of like the cape and tanuki tail combined together. We can now access baby Yoshis, which lets us kill enemies with bubbles, fly high in the air, or grant more light in the dark. Nabbit is a nice new addition for some replay value, as you'll have to occasionally chase him down to grab power-ups. Beyond the main game, there's a new challenge mode where you'll complete specific tasks that are honestly a ton of fun to do. 
Plus, there's Boost Rush, where you'll basically blast through a stage and collect coins as fast as possible. And with the gamepad, you can touch the screen to add boost blocks if playing with a friend or completing a challenge. The Von Go levels are absolutely gorgeous. If only more levels went with a cool art style like this one. The mini mushroom still isn't that great, but now you can run up walls. Gotta admit, that's also pretty epic. And if you thought the game was too easy, there's always new Super Luigi U, which swaps out all the Mario levels with shorter and harder ones. And if you like both the games, then there's of course new Super Mario Bros U Deluxe, which has all the levels plus Toadette and Peachette as new characters. Super Mario Maker 2 is finally out. This is a game I've been looking forward to for quite a while. And to celebrate the occasion, I have the one and only DGR joining me for today's video. Hey everyone, it's a pleasure to be here, but before we begin, we just wanted to let you know that there are some power-up spoilers in this video in case this sort of thing might bother you. And with that said, let's get into why Super Mario Maker 2 is mind-blowing in 3, 2, 1. We finally have slopes, and not just slopes, but different types of elevation. Super Mario 3D World is a game style? Who could have seen that coming? Finally, after over 30 years of Mario, we can play online multiplayer. Let's just hope it improves over time since the levels tend to be a little laggy. And you can build levels with a friend at the same time. Pretty darn handy if I do say so myself. When looking at all the styles, you can see that it says extra game styles, which could mean more styles are coming in the future. While there's still a pesky course ID, at least it's only 9 characters long instead of the dreaded 16. Like before, some of the older Mario games got new course themes and some wonderful new music, like this one for example. Instead of just plain old water levels, you can now adjust when the waves come in as well as the speed of them. And the same goes for the lava and poison. Speaking of poison, the poison mushroom is actually back, and it's even more intimidating. This thing will magically climb up walls and chase you down. And there's the new super hammer, which lets you whack a hammer around and even create boxes out of thin air. Oh, I like the sound of that. Swanky box, control yourself please, you're not in this clap. Sorry. The snake blocks are some of the most interesting elements in Mario games since you never know which direction they'll move. Oh man, the on and off switch is gonna make for some extremely creative puzzle levels and I can't wait to tackle them. I love how the swinging claws change facial expressions depending on whether you're on them or not. As much as auto scrollers can be annoying, it's really neat that you can change the direction as well as the speed of them now. And we finally have true vertical levels. There's so many more stage opportunities now. The dry bone shell is such a cool new item. The fact that you can float across lava or poison is pretty crazy. Clear conditions just made Mario levels a thousand times more interesting. Sure, we still have to get to the end, but having to do things like defeat a certain amount of enemies or collecting so many coins makes levels feel way more layered. Not only is Yoshi back, but now you can play the red ones and spew some hot fire, just like in the OG title. Boom Boom is a mad lad. If you don't believe me, well, Nintendo said so. Watch out for Boom Boom. The mad lad will chase after you, swinging his arms and legs. See? I told you. On top of all the new assets you can build with, there's a more in-depth story mode with over a hundred brand new levels. There's also a night mode for every theme, which changes how the courses work, like flipping the gravity or even giving you a moon jump. Even though Miiverse is gone, you can still leave written comments or even a fun stamp that just says, NICE! The Thwomps in Mario Bros. 3 have new sprites when attacking, and it's really nice seeing all these smaller details added in. Small characters in Mario Bros. 1 can now crouch, which was never possible until now. The new Super Mario Bros. backgrounds look way more lively than they ever did in the previous titles. You can play Mario Galaxy music if you want, that's awesome! As well as some tunes from Mario 64 and Mario Sunshine. I needed to see that. It's really nice that Nintendo took the extra time to polish 3D world moves for Mario, so it feels more seamless in 2D. Like diving with Cat Mario is way faster, and the long jump is quicker too. While building levels is a little clunky using a controller, handheld mode is a breeze with either your finger or a stylus. It's miles easier finding the pieces you need. Now they're all organized in categories and put together in circles. Instead of shaking enemies and seeing if they change, you can simply push down and see everything that you can add with a submenu. 
menu. Who would have thought Nintendo would bring back the Super Ball flower from Super Mario Land? Does that mean a Mario Land game style is coming at some point? Nobody seems to remember this Mario basketball title on the DS, and that's a shame because it's one of the most interesting and well-made Mario sports games of all time. Because quite frankly, it's a slam dunk! And with that said, let's get into why Mario Hoops 3 on 3 is mind-blowing. In 3, 2, 1. This is one of the few touchscreen games that actually works and feels fluid. With a touchscreen, you can dribble, shoot, steal a ball, use items, swap characters, sidestep, block, basically everything you can normally do in a basketball game, all with the touchscreen. The character select music is such a banger. And how do you select a character? Uh, yeah, that's right, you dunk them into a net. That is epic. The special moves in this game are really cool and unique to each character. Like Waluigi just swims through the air like a god followed by a hard dunk. I love how Wario humps the air after scoring a shot. Bowser Jr.'s special has to be the best because he uses the paintbrush from Mario's sunshine and whacks it into the net. That is freaking sick. Can we just talk about this character roster? We've got most of the best Mario characters on top of freaking Final Fantasy characters like Ninja, White Mage, Kakutar, Moogle, and Black Mage. I love how everyone's just head bopping to the music and then Kakutar is all just like... <laughs> <laughs> and some characters even have costumes, like Peach and Daisy can change from shorts to a skirt, and Ninja has different outfits. Plus, there's unlockable balls, like you can use a watermelon, Cheap Cheap, Goomba, and even a dice. That doesn't even make sense, but who cares? You can use a freaking dice. The fact that there's only six players at a time makes it really easy to see what you're doing on the smaller screen. Plus, it just feels less cluttered. The item system is so smart. When you have the ball, the question marks can give you coins, but if you don't, then it gives you a random item. And it's basically all Mario Kart items, which just makes this game more fun and frantic in general. The tourney mode is a good way to test your skills, and it actually gets a bit hard around the end of it. I really love the art used for each character. It's got a nice, clean, cartoony style. The Dribble Race is a nice side game where you have to grab 100 coins as fast as possible while green trails try to zuck you up. The Exhibition Mode has a lot of customization for each match, which is definitely appreciated. And all the courts are extremely interesting as they all look really nice and have their own obstacles and gimmicks. Like in Peach Field, there's cheap cheeps that just decide to flop around and make things harder. And the Net for Daisy Garden is literally a piranha plant. Yeah, you can't even slam dunk on this course. You're only allowed to make shots from afar. Bloop Cheap Sea is interesting because it's the only underwater court and they make everything more floaty, which adds some variety compared to the other courts. Are these Mario and Luigi surfboards foreshadowing something? Hmm? Ground pounding should probably be banned, but I'm not complaining. That's pretty cool. I don't know why, but I like making Bowser Jr. dribble side to side so he has to constantly hop around. It looks kind of funny. And on top of all that, you could even play this game with friends through local play. Mario Kart on big TV, Mario Kart on handheld, Mario Kart on the phone. Ew. But nobody ever seems to remember Mario Kart Arcade. Yes, you have to leave your home and earn those silver dollars to play this hotshot. So here is why Mario Kart Arcade GP is mind-blowing. In 3, 2, 1... You can play as Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man, and Blinky. You don't see that every day. There's a whopping 93 items. While you can't use them all at the same time, the sheer variety of items is really great. And all the characters have special items, which is a nice throwback feature from Double Dash. Some of this music really slaps and nobody talks about it. I mean, those Mario Cup tunes are some hot jams. The first mission in this game is a fun reference to Super Mario Sunshine. There are four Rainbow Road tracks. Well, okay, technically two of them are clones, but still, that's a lot more than most Mario Kart games. If you ever wanted your face to be in the game, well, you can use the Nam Cam. Although I'm not, because that's a little weird. The background in Mario Highway kind of reminds me of DK Mountain. Ah, every Mario Kart track really is connected. And look at this, Daisy Cruiser is also just chilling in the background. The Double Dash vibes are off the charts. Mario and Luigi heads are engraved into the freaking mountain because they're just that legendary. Having so many clone tracks kind of sucks, but Mario Highway Sunset does at least look really nice. You simply can't hate a game where you can throw a steering wheel. This jungle really is so lush and pretty. As wrong as this sounds, I kind of enjoy smashing these Koopas senseless. And don't you dare sue me, PETA! They're fake, they're not real. 
we've got a track where we can see Donkey Kong's ancient ruins. Yeah, that's right, Dong Lore. What more could you want? It includes a banana with a mustache. Why don't we see more of this fine looking specimen? There really should be whacking items in regular Mario Kart. They're so satisfying to use. I don't really like cities, but I would definitely live in this one if I could. Backwards missions? Ooh, you know I'm all about that life. Finally, I can throw a delicious pie at someone without feeling bad. Not even Mario Kart DS had a jump rope mission like this one. Also, Pac-Man Maze the track. Oh my god, yes please. That's right, there's a goddamn boss fight against Bowser himself, the king of the coops. It's really easy, but it's still pretty cool. If there's one good thing about Bowser's castle, at least he has lots of pictures of his son Bowser Jr., so he cares a little bit, right? I really like these little jump ramps because they let you take faster routes, but also making that jump has a risk of failing. It's a fun little dynamic. Also, Rainbow Coaster is like Sky Garden and Rainbow Road having a baby. I adore it. An undersea-themed Rainbow Road is something I didn't realize I needed. Well, there you have it, guys. I'm actually on my way to play some Mario Kart Arcade myself, so if you'll just excuse me. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you also have a great day. So that's about it. See you guys.